What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Unhinged Talk. As usual, I'm your host, Patrick Hennessy. Joined by the usual crew tonight, Brandon Kramer, Brian DeGenero, Paris Gavis Inafantos. How you guys doing? Good. <laughs> Good, man. Still quarantined, Good. right? Yeah. Uh, we got little to no baseball news to talk about. So I figured we'd take tonight and kind of just discuss on, like, past slash present slash future baseball and uh, talk about, like, the biggest boss in Yankees history and maybe players who you think might be future boss. Um, personally, like, there's just an un... The potential is limitless when talking about, like, Yankees boss because it's very subjective. Like, people could consider John Carlos Stanton the most recent Yankees bust, or they could even consider, like... Jacoby Ellsbury. So it depends on the person, but for me, I would have Who? to say it's yeah. What? Can you repeat that last? Can you just repeat oh, that yeah. name again? Yeah, I I, uh, I sometimes I mispronounce it. I just pronounce him as the guy who never played. So it just <laughs> and it also depends. TBT to the time where he the year he actually signed with the Yankees his first year. My friend got me the worst gift for my birthday. He got me a Jacoby Ellsbury T-shirt. <laughs> oh, I we still have one. You know what I did with that shirt? Burned it. It's been in the bottom of my pile. And then the year, a couple months ago, I decided to donate clothes. That and the Robinson Cano t-shirt I actually had, those were the first two pieces, articles of clothing I actually donated. I miss Cano. Meh. Me too. Speaking of Cano, though, do you think he was a boss for the Mariners? Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, right? No doubt. I mean, he, he was decent for the, the couple form. years he was there, but... He I never feel like captured the form. What he didn't you bring got them to the playoffs. That's so. no. Also, well, Felix Hernandez was past his prime when he. It's got also there. funny with that group of him, Melky, and A Rod all got caught. Yeah. At different yeah. times. Um, a Rod uh, was like their Francisco mentor, Cervelli right? Too. At, and Cervelli, and Cervelli, yeah. Yeah, but um, Brandon, who's who would you consider the biggest boss in Yankees history? Well, I got I, in a way I have two. One I'm going to start off with. It's not really a bust, but it's an interesting topic. You could consider Eduardo Nunez a bust because he was the guy that they held back in the Cliff Lee trade. They didn't mm-hmm. want to give up Eduardo Nunez. He doesn't pan out. You get beat by Lee in 2010. So while you can you can consider Nunez a bust, but um, if we're going pros for me prospect, the most recent big bust would probably be Jesus Montero because. At one point, he was the number three prospect. It was Trout, Chris Bryant, and then Jesus Montero. He was being compared. His defense was awful. May always said that. But he was being compared to Miggy, and that was when Miggy was in his prime. And he comes up, does decently, and then gets traded and shits the bed. I mean, if you really look at it, a lot of the Yankees' top prospects in the last five years all hit a home run in the first or second game they yeah. played. <laughs> and it's all been downhill. Remember Tyler Austin hit a home run. Judge hit a home run. What about Aaron Judge, though? Yeah, Judge Judge, Sanchez. Judge stunk. When Judge got called up in 2016, like towards the end of the season, he hit that home run back-to-back with Tyler Austin. He had a high week, and then he cooled down. Yeah. Yeah, then Judge wasn't that great towards the end of 2016. And then 2017, it was questionable whether he was going to make the roster or not. And then he won American League Rookie of the Year, and he should have won MVP, but. That's 2017. But recently, you know, the most. You know, I was just going to say, Bird. you know what I would be really interested in? I want to go back and watch like 2017 opening day and kind of see like what the commentary was around Judge because I don't really remember what like the, uh, the narrative around him was. I don't know if they were pushing it Stand as. Change. Yeah, I don't really remember, but it, it's definitely. Because he, won, he won the right field on. job. He won yeah. the right field job. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was batting seventh. I think he hit a double, uh, um, in the, uh, on opening day. Um, it was all about his stance chains. They were all talking about how he stood too high with his, with his frame and he could never touch a breaking ball, especially yeah. with high fastballs as well. And they all spring training was just about stance change. I don't think he had an, like an amazing spring training, but was, was 2017 opening day in Tampa when they lost? Yeah, it was in yeah, Tampa. Okay. Um, Tanaka gave up. I think he gave up a home run to. Uh, I remember Yankee killer Corey Dickerson. Oh, I really wanted the Yankees to sign Dickerson this offseason. I mean, Castellanos. He's a, actually, he's a great player. Dickerson's a good. I mean, he's hit the ball off of the ground 
for a base hit three times in his career. Like there are videos <laughs> of awesome. the ball bouncing. He signed he with Miami, double. right? Yeah. Yeah. Miami is, I wouldn't say a playoff team, but a sneaky good team with, if guys can recapture, if Jesus Aguilar recaptures whatever the fuck he had in 2017, they could be. The Yankees lost 7-3 to three that game. In seven to three. Did Judge have a double? Or was it the next man. game? I Headley hit the Headley hit a home run, I think. Remember Chase? Headley no, Torres like hit our MVP first home run. Candidate. Torres hit our first home run. Does anyone remember that when Headley was an MVP candidate in San Diego? The distant memory. His first his first game with the Yankees, he had a walk off. That was his first game. Yeah, walk off single. I was watching it the other day. The prime moment I'll always remember Chase Headley for was uh, the double against Houston in the 2017 oh, ALCS. What he, he ate shit ar- running around yeah. the bases? Judge, yeah. you want to hear something crazy? In 2017 yeah. opening day, Judge batted eighth <laughs> and won one for four with that double. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I, I don't think that there were high expectations for him going into that season at all. I remember the fucking pitch. This, Wait, I have to double check. No. This was their opening day lineup. Brett Gardner, Gary <laughs> Sanchez, Greg Bird. Wait, Sanchez was batting second? Yeah, yeah. San- Sanchez was a story coming into 2017. Yeah. He was yeah. uh, If he continued what he did, he was probably going to win or at least be in top five of MVP. But uh, Gary Sanchez went 0 for 5 that game. I remember, he had, he had like a couple strikeouts. No, yep. he had two hard-hit balls, though. One was like up the middle, but he had a couple strikeouts. It was Gary Sanchez, Greg Bird, Matt Holliday. Jacoby oh, Ellsbury, Holiday. Starling like Castro, Holiday. Chase yeah. Headley, Aaron Judge, and Ronald he, Torres. It's just because he was an improvement over Chris Carter. Torres hit, hit the first yeah. home run of the season. Chris Carter got pinched hit. <laughs> for, because uh, they pinched it for Gardner. It was Pete Kuzma. Pete Kuzma. After, oh, my God. And after that, Kuzma. Chris Carter. Oh, my God. Was it, we had a defensive – Cosmo's a defensive special. Honestly, I know that we kind of wanted to revolve the discussion around, like, Yankees bust. But, honestly, I want to talk about those 2017 Yankees. Yeah, that's a good Heading topic. into the season, like, I just – the expectations just weren't there. Like, even if you look I, at that opening day lineup, that's that doesn't look like a playoff team whatsoever. But for some uh, reason, somehow, some way, they just completely – lit on fire and it's, it's the sto- yeah it's the story of the yankees for the past couple seasons it's like whenever they look like they're down in the dumps they just turn everything around and do a complete 180 yeah they had a lot of magic that year well i remember awesome. that that year i think steinbrenner said something it was the first time they actually sent something out i was like i was like pretty much a heads up like we're we're rebuilding like mm-hmm. we're not really expected to do much this year um yeah. and then that happened it was crazy. Judge that, happened. Judge happened. He carried us. But it's crazy to think if he doesn't – I mean, when he comes – after the home run derby, he had a bum shoulder for a while. Yeah. yeah. Just imagine. Well, first of all, he should still have 53 home runs because if you remember the game against the Cardinals? Yeah. When he hits yeah. the shot to right center field and they call it yeah. fan interference. But anyway, if he didn't get hurt, you could count on him because he was pretty much out of commission for two months. Mm-hmm. Term, he was not. He, I think he actually hit 176, which is what his he had. His home run numbers weren't for the that 2017 bad. season. No, it's not. No. But if he was stayed healthy, he probably could have hit. 50 for that 2017 plus. season, for 50 the only free agent acquisitions the Yankees had is they signed Matt Holliday, and then they signed Chapman again for five years, 86 million, and, and then they signed Chris Carter at, in February. That but honestly, I remember the whole the, narrative with the whole uh, Chapman signing was why are they doing this? Uh, a rebuilding team doesn't need an all-star closer. And I think that that narrative kind of gets lost too because people are like, oh, the Yankees like meant to sign Chapman because they knew they, knew they were going to contend. No. I think the plan was to sign Chapman now so you had him in a couple years from when they did plan on contending. Yeah. Because exactly. Matt Holiday, that was a signing just to get at bats in from a vet on a rebuilding team. Right. Right. Yeah. You want that veteran leadership. And – until he got, I think he had mono or something. He was, I wouldn't, he wasn't doing great, but he was doing decently. And I'll, I'll admit, the Chris Carter signing, when it happened, 
I think he was coming off leading the NL in home runs. He was, so you thought, yeah. okay, at Yankee Stadium, maybe there could be some magic. I mean, he did hit like three or uh, two thirty with he the laid Brewers. An egg that year. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, he single handedly. That remember the West Coast trip from hell when CC got hurt and Hicks got hurt. Carter dropped the ball. It was like in I don't know what what inning it was. Five pitches later, CC gets hurt and pulled from the game. Yeah, I remember that. And then I think Hicks gets hurt later that game. So it was all his fault, is what yeah, you're Yeah, pretty much was all his fault. It's just crazy to and see if how he won that team that would have gotten a ring. How that team came to be. Like I think they realized midway through the season that wow, we might actually have something here. And then that's when they made that massive trade with Chicago. And we got uh Canley, mm-hmm. Robertson, and Frazier. And then the Sonny Gray trade happened the next week, I think. We got was that Jaime Garcia? Same yeah, season, right? Well, the, the Twins traded for Garcia thinking they could contend. Yeah. Then they're then, like, yeah, no, we're not contending and shipped them to us. He didn't do much. But they ended up contending. <laughs> they ended up con- – yeah, yeah. That wild card year was not very competitive at all. That was no. one of the best play- playoff games I've ever been to in my life. Yeah. That I was, yeah, I was there too. Card. I think Brian was the only one of us not there. <laughs> no, I was not. You know what's the sad thing? I was thing? watching Brian it on TV. Brian won't be able to attend the playoff game for the next two years. I don't think any of us will be. Yeah. <laughs> this year, definitely not. But next year, I can see us. It's such a shame. I don't think that there's ever uh, a postseason that compares to 2017, for me to be completely honest. Like, no. it just seemed like at any point, if they were trailing in a game or if they were down in the series, like, the hope was never dead. Like, in 2018 yeah. against Boston, after they get completely clobbered, I think it was game three, like, you knew it was over. Even this past season, like when uh, they went down 3-1 against Houston, you kind of knew it was over. But in 2017, when they were down, what were they down? 2-0 to Houston? Yeah, 2-0 to Houston. You knew it wasn't done because for some reason there was this mentality that, like, the Yankees don't lose at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, like, in the postseason. And also the the Astros didn't have their trash cans to bang at Yankee yeah. Stadium either. So. But also in 2019, they didn't either, and they still lost. So, yeah, That's all I'm saying. But, I mean, with 2017, it was – people forget. Judge was great. Starlin Castro hit three over 300. He was awesome. What, I love Starlin he was, Castro. He was, in a way, the guy – I mean, he was hurt for a while. And when he actually hurt his hamstring, he rushed himself back, and he still kept playing. But when he left or when he got hurt, the team kind of slowed down. He was kind of yeah. that piece. I think he was batting at the top of the order. That's right before D. 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 kind of was starting to come into his own at that time. Hey, don't get me a – I don't know if I'm – this is right, but 2015, 2016 was the year Luis Severino was supposed to break out. So they started him as a starter, I believe, in the end of 2015. Yeah. And then they put him in the bullpen. But 2017 was prime year Luis Severino. He was on, yeah. he was like in the he was in contention for the Cy Young Award last mm-hmm. that year. Yeah. So and, and then, then he got paid in 2018, and the rest is history. I well, think it I was think... 2017 spring training when they went into it not knowing whether he would be a starter or reliever because he ended 2016 as a reliever. Guy. I think. Yeah, he's yeah. like it's their weapon out of the bullpen. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, the thing with Sevy was. There was a six-man rotation battle at spring training. It was between yeah. Tanaka, Sabathia, Sessa, Montgomery, Severino, and M- Michael Pineda. Pineda. Ugh, Pineda. Pineda, honestly, is the one of the biggest what-ifs, I would think, in baseball because you there were gl- flashes of him. Like, w- prime Pineda would have been that 16-strikeout game when he has a slider and his fastball, he's untouchable. But he after just that, – After that game in May – that season went down the hill for him. Yeah, I think uh, that's he when he started. That's when he blew out his elbow, roughly around that time. Did he get uh, Tommy John surgery that year? Or yeah, he got Tommy John in 2017. Going back on Sarlin Castro, though, I have no recollection of him like doing anything of substance in the postseason. Am I just like losing my mind, or did he actually not? He do didn't anything? do. He didn't do much. I can't picture him getting to- one hit. I mean, I can picture one or two hits, but in terms of like a big no big hit, hits, no. definitely no big no hit. big hits at all. A couple defensive plays, including one that no one pays enough attention to. It was um, 
It was in the ninth against Cleveland. It's a short hop, and he plays back, and he kind of catches it. It's a weird angle and flips it to Didi to get an out in that inning. If he doesn't make that play, the ball goes by him. And then I believe the Indians would be set up with bases loaded. That play is not looked at enough, but he was kind of the guy in the infield that kept it together because you had Frazier, who before Frazier was Headley, but Didi was, in 2017, Didi was a mess. He was not a, not the greatest fielder. Um, honestly, one thing, his bird was a rock at first, but no big hits whatsoever from Castro. I can't even think of one. Regardless, he though, it, I th- – Yeah, that Houston series, he batted 208. What about in Cleveland? It's not as bad as I thought. He batted 273 in Cleveland. He had six hits and five hits against Houston. Yeah, he but was not one whole- sneaky, I guess. And he only had one RBI. He only had one RBI that entire playoff. Maybe that's why. against Cleveland, right? Yeah. But, yeah, I think that that team kind of had the wrong mentality at the end of things. I think once they got eliminated in game seven, it was more like, don't worry, like we're, we're a couple of years ahead of schedule anyway. So this loss doesn't really mean much. We'll be back bigger, stronger next couple of years. But it keeps going back to that mentality. Like how many years can we keep saying that? 2018 was supposed to be our year. That was supposed to be our year since 2015, 2018, 2018, and we, Machado, Harper. And then 2019 well, the comes and then we're like, okay, we're still 2018. Now we're not going to play it all in 2020. And then we're already in 2021. So this, the clock's ticking. I think the, I, like, I like judge mentality a lot, but what if he didn't play Frank Sinatra walking out of Fenway Park that series? It's something I, didn't forget, ex- I wouldn't expect from judge. Exactly. But don't forget, when they came, when Boston came to Yankee Stadium game three, like the pissed. first home game, we got smacked 16 16- well, yeah, yeah that, was, that was the game Sevy showed up 15 minutes before the game started to start warming up. Oh, did Sevy pitch or was that Paxton? No, well, in no, 2018. Sevy. It was 2018. I was at the game, and I remember uh, t- uh, tapping my mom on the shoulder. I'm like, I said, where the actual fuck is Sevy? And she's like, the game's not starting. I'm like, it was 50, It was 7.45. The game was starting at 8. Sevy is not usually they're out 40, 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour or four for a long toss and everything. He didn't do any long toss whatsoever. You can't really do long toss in the batting cage area. And right as the uh, game started, you could tell his control was off and everything was off. Yeah. I, Is when, it bad when to that say happened, big... I completely put that on Boone. I don't, I don't really care what anybody has to say. As a first-year manager, I know that he's not really, like, on – he doesn't have experience with that kind of stuff. But, like – as a manager, you got to make sure your players are all on their A game and they know exactly what's going on. It's, it it's just a lack that, of communication. Is it bad to say after Sevy got it paid, he was no longer an ace for the Yankees? He hasn't been an ace since 2017. I agree. I mean, first half of 2018, he was amazing. But to be really considered an ace, it, you can't just have one good year and then – Flat line. He has, he had, no, he had one and a half good years. And then the second half of 2018, which is where I think the wear and tear in his elbow started because he, his fastball velocity used to be 98 to hundred. It was now 95 to 97, no tilt on his slider whatsoever. They said it was overuse, but overuse leads to Tommy John. Yeah. But I also, think to be considered an ace, you need two, three years pitching at the top of your game. But also in order to be considered an ace, you need to be a guy that can be relied on in a big game. And if it's a big game, he I do not him. want Luis Severino on the mound. Even in uh, this past postseason when he pitched that game in uh, the clinching game in Minnesota, oh there was God. multiple times where he could have given up six runs. He got extremely lucky. I think almost every inning he was on the mound, he, he got out of a base loaded jam every single time. That's not an ace. I, like, I don't care if he gets out of these situations, but I do not want him on the mound in a big game. We all love Sevy, but to consider him an ace, right now I think the ace of the Yankees staff is, is Tanaka. Tanaka and has always been Tanaka. And people yeah. forget, Tanaka had to change his pitching style when he found out he had a partial tear in his UCL. Tanaka's a champ. He's a gamer. He, 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 he literally has 95-96 in his back pocket. And he's out there throwing 90, 90 to 91, 92. But Tanaka has, is probably 
since we started this conversation on the biggest bus, I think Tanaka needs to go up there as one of the biggest free agent signing successes. He does yeah. not get enough credit for his. He's one of the best amazing signings of all time in Major League history. Beautiful. Neither I love Ma- Masahiro Ma- Tanaka. The same thing with <laughs> Matsui. When he came into the league, no, like he was great in Japan, but he's still one of the most underrated free agent signs the Yankees ever yeah. had. He I was agree. a he was a he was was a warrior. He tried to play through a broken wrist. I wish that in the in the postseason the Yankees could throw Masahiro Tanaka out there every single game. I don't <laughs> care least... if his shoulder falls off. <laughs> in that 2017 playoff yes, run, the Yankees won yeah, yeah, all their games off a couple big hits. Ever since that ser- ever since that playoff run in 2018 and 2019, the Yankees haven't had that one big hit. But that's what that's how the Yankees are built. You know, they're not built to put together a bunch of hits in a row. They're built to hit you know, home problem. runs. That's the problem. The well, Yankees 20- are not in runner scoring position in the last couple of years. The Yankees have been terribly. Crap. Last year was the outlier. Last year, I think they were top 10, maybe even top five with runners and scoring. Season. But then when you went to the playoffs, the Twins is a different story. But when it came down to the Astros, I think both teams switched to home runs galore. And I mean, 2019 was a weird year because of the ball. But anyway, yeah. um, I think it Our, came down to 2019 still pains me. Just hurts. Well, no. Well, we went into the postseason. I mean, Gary decided in tech in um Detroit to steal on his own. He hurt his groin, and Edwin that game hurt his oblique, and he was hurt the entire postseason, except for it's maybe just... one or two games in Minnesota. But isn't it sad that whenever Stanton was the DH or in that lineup during the playoff run, they won those games? Yeah. So every well, it's game... it's just because it's not even that Stanton has to perform well. It's that his presence in the, the lineup card is a so much different impact to the opposing starting pitcher. When exactly. Verlander's heading out and to the you... mound and he looks at the Yankees' opposing lineup and he sees Hicks, uh, Judge, Stanton, Sanchez, Glaber, that's much different than seeing Judge, Gardner, Glaber, Cameron Edwin. Mabin. Like, it's a completely different situation when you're throwing Cameron, even though the, the performance might be somewhat equivalent, which it's not, but some people think it is, having Cameron Mabin's name adds a completely different vibe than John Carlos Stanton. Mm-hmm. I don't care what John like Carlos Stanton is, is the key. Well said. If the Yankees want to win, honestly, I will go out and say this, if the Yankees want to win a World Series, Stanton's going to be on the team. They, I, I mean, they could probably do it without him, but if you have him on... Your team just like as whenever, you say, no, the psychological thing. You have Judge. If you have Judge up, and let's say you have Gardner behind Judge, you can pitch around Judge to yeah. face Gardner. But are you going to pitch around Judge to leave it, to put a guy on for Stanton? Hell no. Exactly. Yeah. And also, don't forget, Judge Stanton didn't have that many big hits or like key hits in the last year's playoff run. But his plate appearance right up there, he was like not even swinging at. He balls was in the awesome. Dirt. He put up he had, awesome. He had at-bats. so many walks and during that playoff run, especially against Minnesota. He missed the guy a couple. Was just, good ones. Yeah. He don't was forget he hit a so home run close. off of uh, uh, Granky. Granky was yeah, Granky. But he, what I saw from him is that if he would have had a week or two in the regular season before that postseason run, he would have gone off because there were some pitches that he just missed. He almost hit a grand slam against Minnesota. You give him yeah. a bit of time. Those are all mm-hmm. going out. He was just so, slightly off. Yeah. And uh, on uh, pretty much like a good Stanton is what gets the Yankees over the hump. Can we all it's come true. in like, agreement? Everybody's I saying straight Stanton. He's making all this. Bin- so we can all agree. <laughs> yeah, John Carlos Stanton once. is an awesome baseball player. We can all agree. Hell on that. yeah. He is. Because there's Even if he's a not- countless number of Yankees, Yankees fans who hate this man with a passion. And it's disgusting. He's one of the – when he's it's on ridiculous. his A game and he's healthy, he's one of the most feared hitters in, in the entire game. And people forget that he – so just for the normal hitter, you lose the ball, a 90-mile fastball. Like, last 15 feet, you can't see it. That's a little bit more for Stanton because half of it, like a quarter of his face is paralyzed from when he got hit in the face. So, but like as I you lo- said – No, you – sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, so – with Stanton is, you see a guy with his stance in the box. You're shitting yourself. Like, yeah. The way he stares down pitchers when he's in the box is just, 
it's amazing. It's it's terrifying because he is that that missing key. Because honestly, Stanton, if Stanton's not playing, Patrick's favorite player is batting third. Yeah, that's that's true. disgusting. If there's ever a Yankees playoff game where Brett Gardner is in the top three of the lineup, I'm jumping out my window because that's just <laughs> a comp- it's atrocious. How are you going to have bat Brett Gardner third in a pivotal playoff game? It's disgusting. Pace, Thank you for your time. We're talking about a career that. 176 postseason hitter. <laughs> Come on. You know that off the top we got to let Para get his point in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the only thing I wanted to say is remember that game against uh, Detroit last year with Stanton? Oh, my. With fire. Fire oh, hit him in the arm. Oh, fucking hell. Wasn't Guy was staring him down. It was 2018. Yeah, 2018. It was 2018. Or, yeah. Stanton didn't play a majority of last year. Yeah, but, you uh, knew he was going to come up to the play. In 2018, when he got hit, he stared at him down so bad. And then his next plate appearance, that guy smacked the ball to left field. And it just stared him that. down running the bases. I love You knew when he, when he came up that in that awesome. at-bat, he was hitting that ball 500 feet, no <laughs> doubt. It just was a matter of it was going to go to right field or left field or right back up the middle. It fires his face. And don't forget, Regardless, everybody though, hates fire now. Yeah, I, I don't hate him. I think that he's a, a I hero. The, I think the people might really be a hate snitch, but he's a hero. Of some of the uh, some of the other allegations that. Oh yeah, happens. his yeah. child. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's not why I like. I'm not gonna lie. But regardless, there's more to that. Um, yeah, there's more on. to that story then. There's regardless of what anybody says. There's more to the Houston Astros story that we would never find out. Honestly, that that's. Immunity. That's a topic that we could probably touch on next episode because that's something that's deep as hell. The entire Astros. Are you going to get me going then? Yeah, then I'm going to get Brian going on his Astros. Because right. I feel about that the way you feel about Brett Gardner batting third <laughs> in a playoff game. Like, honestly, I'm a Patriots fan, and everybody says, why are you getting mad? Your football team. Yeah, my team cheated. I've lost respect for the Patriots, obviously, because of that. But when it comes down you to should. They war- cheated. Yeah, they cheated to win the Super Bowl that Like year. three times Actually, that they got even- caught. I mean, you're not wrong, and it sucks. But, like, honestly, when the biggest upset that could have happened with the Yankees in 2017, you find out that they lost because of tra- banging trash cans and cheating inevitably. Pisses yeah, me it's off. really annoying. It's really annoying. I don't, we don't have time to talk about this now because I will go off for 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, so we will see you guys next episode where we are uh, probably going to talk about the Astro saga and have Brian go on his little rant. Great. But before we do that rant, we're going to do a little unhinged trivia that day. We'll see. We'll see how that plays out. We will uh, (laughs) see you guys next time. Have a good night, boss.